So we have another camera comparison here. It is now the Huawei Mate 50 Pro up against the Pixel 7 Pro and then the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So front-facing cameras right now, 4K 60. They can also shoot in 4K 30. We have electronic image stabilization. So this is very tough conditions right now with the sun just above me. Which one is capturing the cloud here just above the castle the best? Looking at the screen, it doesn't seem like it's been captured too well by the iPhone 14 Pro. There's a bit of wind too as well. I'm swapping over the microphones, microphone sources, between these phones so we can hear which one sounds the best. It has the least, hopefully, wind noise out of all three of these. So I'm just going to jog ahead now, testing out that electronic image stabilization. Let me know which one you think is the steadiest here with the front-facing cameras. So the focus on all three of these does look to be good. I haven't really seen any problems. I haven't seen focus pulsing, none of that happening. So a light little jog ahead again, testing out the stability. Wind noise is probably going to be an issue and then just a slow pan now here. So which one is the best? The Mate 50 Pro, the Pixel 7 Pro or the iPhone 14 Pro Max? As I pan around, there should be no jitters, no judder coming through with this footage. It should be really nice and smooth on all three of them. Made rear cameras now, so this is 4K 30 frames per second. We have a 50 megapixel sensor with the variable mechanical aperture with the Mate 50 Pro. 50 megapixel with the Pixel 7 Pro and then 48 megapixel main camera with the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now they all have optical image stabilization and electronic right now. The focus with 4K 30, cross all three, no problems. And we should not see any of that data coming through with the footage. So I'm just jogging down these stairs here, testing out that stabilization. So let me know in the comments, which footage here do you think looks the best out of these three flagships? Ultra wide footage, 4K 30. So we have a 13 megapixel sensor on the Mate 50 Pro versus two 12 megapixel sensors. So which one is capturing this sky here the best? Hopefully exposing all of those clouds there correctly. I'm just gonna walk along down here just to test out the stability and I won't take it easy. A good test of that electronic image stabilization. They are all of course using here electronic image stabilization with the ultra wide cameras. Nice easy pan. And now the zoom cameras, I'll test those. The Pixel here has five times optical versus three times optical with the iPhone and 3.5 with the Mate 50 Pro. I'm just trying to keep this all in the shot. Apply a little bit of digital zoom here with the iPhone. So this is now four and five times digital. And I'll take it up with the Pixel then to, well, that's 8.5 now. And up to six here with the Mate 50 Pro, that is our digital zoom with the zoom cameras. And low light video, so this is the main cameras here, 4K, 30 frames per second, very difficult conditions. I'm in a bit of a darker patch right here and heading into this lighty area. So they are all struggling a little bit. You can see definitely the jarring as a walk comes through more than you would during daytime. Focus on all three and low light seems to be pretty good here. Let's take a look at the ultra wides now. 4K 30, which one looks the brightest but also has the least noise? Looks to me, just looking at the screen, that it's possibly the iPhone 14 Pro that does seem to look the brightest, but just how much noise it has, well, I have to check that out when I get it back. Look at it on my 48 inch OLED screen. And the stability with the ultra wides, not as good as daytime, of course. They're really struggling under these conditions. It is quite dark, but there is a bit of lighting around, of course.
over to the stills now, and these are the main cameras. So if you take a look here at the black fur of my cat Vera, on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, it tends to just crush those blacks, the different shades of blacks in her fur aren't really coming through. Whereas with the Pixel 7 Pro and the Mate 50 Pro, they are coming through. Now the Pixel 7 Pro, I like this shot, I think the best out of these, but a close second is definitely the Mate 50 Pro. Very good image. I like the background blur as well on the Mate 50 Pro. And the colors, have to say probably the best here on the Mate 50 Pro, but by just a margin there. Pixels a tiny bit off, and the iPhone 14 Pro Max, there is white fur, isn't actually that white. It's more like the Mate 50 Pro. This photo of the light pink hibiscus flower, well, the iPhone 14 Pro Max oversaturates. It's clipping the most. Pixel 7 Pro gets the colors, well, a little bit off. The best colors are the Mate 50 Pro. However, look at the Pixel 7 Pro when I crop into 200% now. Captures the best detail. The different shades are all those pink colors there. So that one gets the win. Pixel 7 Pro with this shot. Another bright flower. So the iPhone 14 Pro yet again has clipped the colors. Too bright, too saturated. Pixel 7 Pro, very good. The Mate 50 Pro, again with the colors, more correct here, but it's actually a shade in between somewhere that what the Pixel 7 Pro is showing and then the Mate 50 Pro. I prefer here the Mate 50 Pro shot. A close and very close second is the Pixel 7 Pro. Portrait photos now, so front facing camera here and you can see the Mate 50 Pro, no blurred background. I don't know what happened. This is the third time it's happened and I do remember selecting portrait mode. I think I didn't dial in the background blur or something went wrong there. Here, you could either choose the Pixel 7 Pro, I think that's more natural, or the 14 Pro Max, a little bit too bright there. So my pick for the winner is the Pixel 7 Pro. Now with this portrait shot of my daughter, I do like the colors. I think uh, what I saw really more on the Mate 50 Pro, but it's the Pixel 7 Pro here that gets the win. Look at the details in my daughter's hair and her shirt. Compare that to the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It looks a little bit over sharpened, over processed. The Mate 50 Pro as well doesn't really get as much detail as the Pixel 7 Pro does in this one. So this is why I give the Pixel 7 Pro the win for the rear camera portrait shots. HDR test now, so very close when you just look at it, quick glance, but then you realize when you look at the window, no, iPhone 14 Pro Max did not do a good job here. It's got no details outside of that window. It's the Pixel 7 Pro, followed by a very close second from the Mate 50 Pro. So I think HDR performance, the iPhone just a little too bright, doesn't really get the whole scene, the Pixel does. Ultra wide cameras. If you take a look at the Mate 50 Pro, I think it's the worst out of these three. It looks a little bit washed out, not capturing as much detail as the Pixel 7 Pro, which captures the best details in the shadows. As you can see now, as I've cropped in 200%, the colors, they're also similar, but the iPhone 14 Pro Max had the worst colors because the sky was just a little bit too blue, more blue than it really was. My winner here is the Pixel 7 Pro in this shot for ultra wides. Keeping with the ultra wide camera, so this is a very difficult one for me to pick because they are all good. I prefer the Pixel 7 Pro's detail and the shadows, the way they look. So the dynamic range may be slightly better there. However, it's the Mate 50 Pro that gets the colors more true to life. It didn't look quite as bluish, the tint that we have with the 7 Pro and the 14 Pro Max. It's more towards what I saw with the Mate 50 Pro, but overall I think the Pixel 7 Pro's photo is a little bit better. It's just lacking the true-to-life colors with this shot. Zoom cameras now at their optical maximum. I think it's the Pixel 7 Pro here. It looks the best. It does have the five times optical versus the 3.5, and then the three we have with the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Finally, moving over to low light shots. So with the low light selfies, I think it's the iPhone 14 Pro Max. The pixel looks a little bit out of focus. And I've noticed this, that the focal length of that lens with the front facing camera with the Pixel 7 Pro doesn't seem to be at your normal kind of arm's length, but something a little short or maybe just a little too far away. So I think here iPhone 14 Pro Max is getting the wind for the front facing low light selfies. Main cameras, so I think the iPhone 14 Pro Max didn't get this one. It just loses the details in the sea, the background, 
and it just looks a little bit more lifeless to me. It is either the Pixel 7 Pro or the Mate 50 Pro. I like how lively the shot feels. It was more or less like that when I was there. You could see those clouds in the background with that light around them. Now zooming in, you can see it's got more detail than Mate 50 Pro, especially with the C now, but a little bit more noise. I think the Pixel 7 Pro photo is overall a little better balanced. It's handling those lights a little better. So that is my win there. That's getting the win, the Pixel 7 Pro. Only just. Second is the Mate 50 Pro. Low light with the ultra wide cameras. Now I don't really like any of these three. I think for the colors, the Mate 50 Pro does the best job again with the color because the streetlights here in this area are yellowish, orangish. So it should have that tint to it, which it does. But then when you crop in, you see that the Pixel 7 Pro and the Mate 50 Pro have a lot of noise. Now the iPhone 14 Pro Max does have a little bit of noise to as well when you look at the pavers on the ground, but it doesn't have so much noise in the sky. I think overall the most and more pleasant image is the iPhone 14 Pro Maxes here with the ultra wide camera, but the more correct colors, Mate 50 Pro. But the win is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Back with our main cameras now. So for me, it's not the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It has the least detail in the shadows in the background, but it's not actually a bad photo at all. It's very good. The Pixel 7 Pro, probably the best when it comes to the details in the shadows. And then the Mate 50 Pro, also good, but it's looking a little too orangey in this shot. I don't remember it being that orange. It's probably a little bit less, but more than the Pixel 7 Pro shot. So for me, it's the Pixel 7 Pro here, but only just. All three of them are very good for low light shots with the main camera. Ultra wide cameras again, this time inside the car, I think it is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It seems to have the better ultra wide and low light. It just looks a little bit more natural to me. There is definitely a lot less noise when you look at the black areas, like the door. Look at the door with the Pixel 7 Pro and the Mate 50 Pro. There's a lot of noise coming through and I don't like that. I think it's the iPhone 14 Pro Max that takes this one. Finally, the zoom cameras in low light with their night shot modes. So I think it's the Pixel 7 Pro. It just looks a lot more pleasant than the other two. The Mate 50 Pro is almost a little too bright, a little overexposed. The iPhone 14 Pro Max isn't bad, but there is a lot more noise to it. The more pleasant image and overall what I think looks a lot better, it's all subjective of course, is the Pixel 7 Pro's zoom shot here. And very quickly now, just to recap, these are my findings. For the video image quality, it is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I don't really think anyone can touch their quality when it comes to video. That's 4K 30, 4K 60. Now the Pixel 7 Pro had the best stabilization, electronic image stabilization. It just didn't quite have that quality like the iPhone 14 Pro Max does. Microphones for our audio quality, the Pixel 7 Pro had the richest, clearest audio, but it also suffered from the wind noise the most. I found the stability with the Mate 50 Pro tended to be a little bit all over the place. It definitely wasn't one of its strengths video quality. Now for stills, I think daytime stills, Pixel 7 Pro was to me the winner overall. If you average it out, the Mate 50 Pro did really well with the color. It got the color a lot of the times actually better, more accurate, true to life than the Pixel 7 Pro. The iPhone 14 Pro Max still takes an amazing photo. So really you can't go wrong with either, or should I say all three of these phones here, but it depends. If you want the best video quality, get an iPhone 14 Pro. If you want the best stills, it's for me so far, the Pixel 7 Pro is the pretty much new champion here. Thanks a lot for watching this review. Do you agree with my findings? Let me know in the comments. And if you did like this video, please do give a thumbs up. It helps out the YouTube algorithm so more people can see this video.